Hi hey everyone, welcome to our MBA programs virtual information session. Uh, this is presented by California State University at Long Beach in the College of Business. And we're here today representing our graduate business programs office. Just a friendly reminder, everyone will receive the recording as well as the PowerPoint presentation just as soon as the session ends tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Rod Smith to get us started. Welcome. I'm the director of graduate programs and also the direct director of the MBA programs. And I'm going to give you a little background, things you probably already know since you're interested in, in, in an MBA. But I'll talk about the value of an MBA. I'll tell you something about Cal State Long Beach's College of Business and why you might consider us. Then we'll get into the nitty gritty of What's the difference between our four MBA programs? And then Lindsay's going to jump back in and talk about the application process. And then we'll both answer some questions at the end. So almost everybody pursues an MBA because they want to invest in themselves. They want to get a new job. They want to jumpstart their career. Maybe they want to move to a different industry. Um, most people would like more money, especially during these times of inflation. So I'll give you some interesting data put together by the university, Georgetown University Center for the uh, Center for Education in the Workforce. I always forget what the E stands for. Okay. They looked at lifetime earnings depending on the amount of school that an individual had. And lifetime earnings in this case was, I believe, 30 years. It could be 35 years. So if you had less than a high school education, you are likely on average to make just over a million dollars in your lifetime. Okay. If you had an associate degree or a bachelor's degree, there's a substantial jump up to over 2 million to almost 3 million. So not surprising, education pays off and there's lots of studies that, that show this. Uh, the point they made here, though, is there's a big range around that. Somebody could have dropped out of high school and created a, a new product and made millions of dollars. That's certainly possible. Some people could have got their bachelor's degree and decided to uh, um, bum around the world okay, and make no money. All of these things are possible. But on average, these are expected earnings. Notice that when you go from bachelor's degree there in the middle to a master's degree in, mis in business, you jump from under $3 million to about $3,750,000. So it makes on average maybe eight dollars $900,000 difference in your lifetime earnings, which is quite a lot of money. A uh, master's degree gets you almost as much as a doctoral degree and a professional degree, degree like being an attorney um, gets you a little bit more. So it's confirming the value of education. And I think it really shows that there's a big jump between a bachelor's degree and anything less. There's also a big jump between a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. So if you want to make that big jump, then we encourage you to think about us, Cal State Long Beach College of Business. We are AACSB accredited. Most people don't know what that means. AACSB has been around over 100 years, and they accredit colleges of business. AACSB stands for the Association for the Advancement of Collegiate Schools of Business, and they are the premier accrediting organization. 
only 6% of business schools in the world are accredited. So having that accreditation means something, it means you're doing something right. You're planning and executing for your students. Okay, so I have some other badges on this uh, slide that uh, the College of Business earns recognition almost every year, especially when it comes to upward mobility and return on investment. We don't often win those same recognitions when we get we go up against schools like the premier schools that have really low acceptance rates. So we'll admit that we're not in the same league as Stanford or Harvard or Yale, but we serve a different purpose. And because we're AACSB accredited, just like they are, that our degree has value. You get the same information. So we've been recognized by the Princeton Review, Money, Best Colleges, Forbes, and a number of other ranking agencies. And you can go out and look at the current rankings by yourself. Money.com has a good review of business schools and graduate programs in business. Okay, so... I like to think that it's not just coming here to take classes. We provide a lot of support to our students. And over the last four or five years, we've increased that substantially. We have a graduate business career services organization. And there's three people there that only work with College of Business graduate students. They'll review your resume. They'll run mock interviews for new job placements, they run internship programs, they run a graduate mentor program where they connect students with alumni, and they enable our students to get out and network with alumni, employers, and other students. So networking is one way that your graduate education helps deliver value. You get to meet like-minded students, you get to meet employers that want valuable students. You get to meet alumni that want to support you. So all of these things kind of work together to help facilitate your success. Okay, let's talk about our four programs. And I'll try to differentiate. So if you're trying to figure out which one you want, then you can... Uh, make a more informed decision. The first one we've been calling our accelerated MBA, but because of a recent curriculum change, it's not really that accelerated anymore. It's more of a daytime MBA. So students in this program go during the day, during the week. So they give up employment for a while for education. In contrast, the evening MBA, students in that program typically work full-time and they come to Cal State Long Beach and they take classes in the evening. Okay, this is our most flexible program and I'll talk about that more. There's also an option where you can do a joint MBA and MSA, Masters in Fine Arts, where you take 36 credit units with the College of Business and some ungodly number like 55 with the theater organization. But it's a great program if you want to combine both of those fields of study. Okay, our newest MBA program is our online MBA program. It's been around since 2019. It's grown to its where it's probably at the size we want to keep it, okay? But it gives you the advantages of the evening MBA, for example, but you don't have to come to school. You just have to log on from wherever you are. And the Saturday MBA is kind of unique. It gives you the combination of coming to school and being online. It's a hybrid program. 
And when you come to school, you meet on Saturdays. So students in that program go all day one Saturday, and then the next week they'll have a hybrid class where they don't come to school, and then the following week they meet again on Saturday. So all of these programs offer similar curriculum, not exactly the same, but similar. So the daytime MBA. As I mentioned, this is a, a come to school during the day program. It is full time. It's completed in 21 months. So you go fall, spring, you take one class in the summer, plus there's a summer internship. And then there is a, a winter program with an international trip. And I'll talk more about that in a little while. And then you finish up after the winter program in the spring and you're out of here in 21 months. Okay, the emphasis in that program is entrepreneurship and innovation. This is a perfect program that want to build a company or understand or they're going into a company that is very innovative. So they are focusing on how do you develop products? How do you market products? How do you finance products? And every person participates in the Apostle Incubator which is both a class and a service to the community where companies come in and try and create new products. There is a career workshop requirement. The students in this program are typically very new right out of an undergraduate program. So they work closely with our career people, attend some workshops. They are required to have a summer internship so it's all focused around developing, getting ready for a career, not interrupting your career briefly for some education. This is a concierge program. This and the Saturday MBA are both concierge programs. They're run through our College of Professional and Continuing Education, where you play, pay a flat rate amount for each credit unit so there's no domestic rates there's no out-of-state fees and everybody pays the same rate but with that you get your education you get all of your books if we keep you on campus we'll give you meals and you get an international trip you have to pay a little bit to get to where we're going but the all of the activities in country will be paid for within the program. So our typical daytime MBA is relatively young, probably less than three years out of an undergraduate program on average. So 25 years of age, 3.3, undergraduate GPA. These were all pretty good students that, that see the value of education and wanted to continue. It's about a 50-50 split when we took this average. It was 47% women. It is 45% international. It's attractive because there are no out-of-state tuition fees involved. Okay. And they average less than three years of, of work experience. Okay, here's a sample schedule. It's pretty typical. You'll see many of the same classes on the schedule for the other programs. But you jump right in with accounting 500. So you learn something about financial statements. You learn something about marketing. You learn something about human resource management and information system 601 is our statistics class. You can't operate in business anymore without a little knowledge of statistics and business analytics. So that's 
your first semester. Then your second semester, you get a managerial accounting course, you get a introduction to finance course, you get another marketing course, and you get an introduction to information systems course. Then in summer, you take one course and then pursue your internship. In the second year, you add on to that first finance course, and then you get introduced to the Apostle Incubator. It comes in twice. There's an A and B, so it's in both fall and spring. So you get to develop your business idea there. And then we get management 542 and 647. So you get to learn about leadership and you get to learn about strategy. During the winter session, which happens to be between December and the end of January, so it's between the end of our fall semester and the beginning of our spring semester. That's when you take your international trip. So this year, the third week in January, the uh, daytime MBA students are going to Barcelona. It should be a great trip. They've got almost all of their visits set up. So Barcelona is very innovative, city, lots of entrepreneurs work out of Barcelona. So it's a great opportunity for our students to learn something there and enjoy Spain in the middle of winter. And then you finish up with any remaining elements of the short-term study abroad in year two. You finish the incubator. Okay, You might compete in a uh, competition where the uh, best business ideas can earn some funding. And that's going on here very shortly for this year's daytime MBA students. And then you finish with marketing 692, which is kind of a marketing for entrepreneurs. And the 699 is a capstone course. You'll see that at the end of every MBA program is supposed to integrate everything that's gone on earlier in the program. So completed in 21 months. So what does it cost? I'm an accountant by background. So that's usually the first question that I ask. It's $950 per unit, okay? Or a total of $45,600 for the full program. Sounds like a lot of money, but if you go to some place like USC down the road, you're talking about three times that amount. And remember, this includes your textbooks, your parking on campus, meals, and includes your international travel experience. So we think that this is a great value. Okay, let's talk about the evening MBA. This is not a concierge program but it is very flexible. It's designed for working professionals, small class sizes. There are a variety of electives in this program. In fact, you can specialize in human resource management, or you can specialize in a few things outside of the College of Business in the Health and Human Services College. So you can kind of integrate maybe things in your background into your business degree. So summer enrollment in this program is optional. It depends on how fast you want to finish. Okay, so in this program, the students are a little bit older. They've been out of school about five to six years, 28 years of age. 3.16 GPA. 40% okay. are women in this program. So a little bit lower than the daytime MBA. It's also lower than the online MBA. And Saturday MBA, it fluctuates. So I can't say for certain, but because this is an online program and people want to commute to campus, for some reason that attracts men more than it does women, but it 
there's certainly no bias on our part there. About 20% of our students are international. So if you're an international student and come into this program, you will pay out of state tuition to the state of California, and you have to be a full-time student. You can't be a part-time student in this program. So you have a little less flexibility. So since it is flexible and self-paced, you can get through it very quickly if you want. You could go four nights a week, okay? Or you can go one night a week, okay? On average, our students take a little over two classes per semester and finish in about three years, okay? The tuition, and you can follow that link to the Cal State Long Beach uh, University website, which shows the tuition for all programs because it's a it's a state set tuition for the program. You could get the same tuition at virtually every Cal State University. Different. It's determined partially by part time or full time enrollment. So if you go part time and you go more semesters, you're going to pay a little bit more. But if you're a domestic student, your total cost of the program is between thirty and thirty-five thousand dollars. And if you're an international or out-of-state student, you're going to pay more, fifty to fifty-five thousand. So that is why many international students prefer our daytime program. But if you want to come over here and work during the day then this would be a good option for you too. It, it's going to end up costing you a little bit more. So our MBA MFA, our joint degree program between the College of Business and College of the Arts. Okay. It's a full-time cohort model program. You're really primarily driven by the curriculum in the College of the Arts, but you do complete 36 units within our evening MBA program. The master's in fine arts courses are during the day and your MBA courses are during the evening. Okay, so basically you have to commit yourself to going to a lot of classes. Summer enrollment is optional. There is a student practicum experience, a great opportunity where you get to manage, market, and develop something in the Cal repertory season. So we have uh, relatively few people go through this, but they are our best students and they, they really get a lot out of the program. Okay, online MBA. Online MBA is our most popular program. People have to learn, people learn to do everything online during the pandemic, okay, but online MBA is, well, it's online and flexible in that you don't have to come to campus. It is a little bit more structured in that you either have to be in our full-time or part-time track for the online program. It is designed for working professionals. Okay? So you're going to go to school during the evenings You'll be with your same cohort throughout, unless there's some reason why you have to change. And this is unique in that classes are held in eight week sessions. We're a semester school, so normally these are 16 week semesters. But for this program, you take, if you're a full time student, you're going to take two classes per eight week session. So you end up taking four classes per semester but you get to focus on two classes at a time. Okay, this runs through the summer. So there's a requirement for summer enrollment. And if you're a full-time student, you get out in under two years. If you're a part-time student, you get out in a little over three years. Okay, the profile of our online MBA students looks a lot like our evening MBA students, 
seven years versus six years, 29 years of age versus 28. Okay, but there's more women in this program. Um, I don't know, maybe women tend to be busier with lots of other things and they like the convenience of online. Again, there's no bias one way or the other when we're selecting people into the program. And the average GPA undergraduate is about 3.17. Here's a sample schedule for our full-time track and our online MBA. And you'll see that it's very similar to what you saw for the daytime program. We didn't show you one for the evening because as I said, it's flexible. So you get some control over the sequence of courses. But for the online, you get less control because we think we have a good sequence picked out for you. You start again with accounting 500 on talking about financial statements. You do the introduction to finance, introduction to management, introduction to marketing. And then you start building on that foundation with another accounting course, a human resource management course, your statistics course, IS601, and another marketing course. Then over the summer, you'll take another finance course and you'll take a strategy course, then you're nearing the end. The next fall, you would take your third finance course. You'd take a human resource management course, a information systems course, and another advanced marketing course. And you finish the program with a review of supply chain management issues, and that GBA 699 is the capstone course, which is supposed to integrate all of the knowledge, all of the things you've learned in the program. Okay, And you're supposed to do a project. It's a team-based course. And in many cases, we have projects with outside businesses, so you can work on a real-world problem. Part-time. Not too surprising, instead of two class, instead of four classes per semester, two classes per session, you take one class per session or two per semester, and you take them in a, basically the same sequence. So everything is just slowed down. Same 500 level courses or introductory or foundational courses, and then you build on those with the 600 level courses and you finish with the 699 capstone course. Identical courses, just at a slower pace. So cost estimate, this is, the costs of this program are virtually identical to the cost of the evening program. Again, it's a stateside program. So part of the tuition is supported with your state of California tax dollars. Okay, it would be the same tuition and cost of almost any CSU. Okay, that that's on a semester basis. Some CSUs are on a trimester basis, so they have a little bit different cost structure. But again, the overall cost is between thirty and thirty-five thousand. If you're a California resident, and between fifty and fifty-five thousand, if you are not a California resident. Okay, finally, Saturday MBA. I think this is our most interesting program in that uh, you get an opportunity to come to school on Saturday. It is a concierge program. It's completed in two years. We focus in this program on disruptive technology. So you learn some technology skills. You get to talk about how technology is changing business, things like artificial intelligence and the impact. And within the program, we also focus on sustainability. So we talk about the business impact of being green, the business 
impact of social movements okay? and the importance of being sustainable and resilient in your financial outcomes. This is typically the program with the oldest students. Okay, we're looking for people with more years of work experience here. The average GPA is 3.25. Okay, for the this cohort, 58% of women were women and the average age was 32 years. So these people bring a lot of experience to the classroom and it's a lot of fun to teach in this program and I've done that. I've taught in the daytime MBA program and the Saturday MBA program. I have not taught yet in either the evening or the online MBA program, but who knows? Still opportunities ahead. This is interesting in that their semesters are shorter. So they go in 10 week terms that aren't necessarily aligned with the university's semesters, okay. but it's a convenient way to get you through the program in less than two years. But again, you'll see Management 500, Accounting 500, Finance 501, okay, Marketing 500. Those are all foundational courses and you'll take them all early in the program. The one different thing you see in the fall 2023 term is a GBA 599 course. And we added that course when we started to focus in on disruptive technology. So it's all about how companies use technology to disrupt their industry. You get to do some hands-on work with technology and you get to develop an app that is supposed to provide a new product. And that can be a continuing project throughout the program. So they have an international trip that 690, GBA 690 in the summer term is an international trip and this coming year, the Saturday MBA is going to Munich, Germany and meet with companies that emphasize sustainability. Okay, so it can be completed in two years. It is a flat rate cost per unit of $1,000 for this program. But again, you get everything that you would normally pay for your education so the cost of the program is $48,000. You get meals. If you're here on a Saturday, you'll get breakfast and lunch. Okay. You get the in-country payment for your international experience. All you have to do is figure out how to get there. Okay, And we don't add in the cost of the airline flights because most people want to bring their family. They want to add in a little vacation or something, it's really hard to, to figure out how much it, that's going to cost and include it in the fees. So I've outlined the four programs. So let's compare them on this chart and it might help you figure out which one is best for you. Okay. The Accelerated on the left and the Saturday MBA on the right are run through our College of Professional and Continuing Education. Those are the concierge programs where you pay one price per unit and you get textbooks, you get parking, you get all of the above. The accelerated MBA is 21 months. The Saturday MBA is 23 months. If you go full-time in the other programs, you're out in about the same time period. So there's not much difference in the length of the program. The curriculum in all the programs is basically the same. The 
evening and online MBA programs are what we term state supported. Okay, they are just like the undergraduate programs at Cal State Long Beach. Okay, we get state funds, they pay for the professors, et cetera. Okay. And so that's a state side program and you pay the fees set by the state of California. Again, the evening MBA is self-paced and flexible and a significant amount of the classes are in person. A lot of them tend to be hybrid because while we found out during and after the pandemic, while people say that they prefer in-person classes, what they mean is they want in-person some of the time and they don't want to fight traffic all of the time. So we kind of mix it up. But for on online MBA, the only traffic you have to fight is between you and your computer. So you have to get there and log on by the start of the class. And the classes started either six or seven. Usually that depends on instructor preference. So the online MBA has really no electives. It is a set curriculum. At some point, point we're going to consider some alternatives, but we think we have a, a MBA program that hits the main points of every MBA program. In the evening MBA, you have some opportunity to take more courses in a particular area. So there are really four elective courses that you get to pick. And then an accelerated and Saturday MBA, you don't get to pick any courses, but you get a program that focuses either on innovation and entrepreneurship for the daytime program or disruptive technology and sustainability for the Saturday program. Okay, now Lindsay is going to jump into the app, app, application, I can't talk, application process. And there was one question, do we offer a nonprofit management program? Some of the courses would talk about that, but there's no specific not-for-profit management. Ed, we'll go ahead and jump in and see a little bit more information about the application process. So hopefully now you have narrowed it down as to which one of our MBA programs might be the best fit for you in your life. Uh, so we'll talk about how to apply. So in order to be eligible for our programs, an applicant should have a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution. And the undergraduate GPA, the university as a whole, this California State University system, has a minimum GPA requirement of a 2.50. Within the College of Business, our applicants tend to be a little bit more competitive, and so we do have a slightly higher GPA requirement of a 2.75 for any of our graduate business programs. And then I do sound like a radio announcer every time I say this, but just a brief caveat in that meeting minimum or general requirements does not automatically guarantee admission. Um, so we'll get into a little bit more of our tips and tricks for how to put forth your best application components in a moment. For our friends who are joining us who are um, international applicants or who have degrees from abroad, they'll also need to submit demonstration of the English language requirement. Uh, the most popular ones are their TOEFL, IELTS, and Duolingo. However, they do have additional test scores that they accept, and there's additional information at this link here. So a little bit about the application process. Applicants will create a profile through Cal State Apply. This is the same platform that all 23 California State University campuses utilizes for applicants to apply to both undergrad and graduate school. So if you recently attended or applied to a Cal State, uh, then likely you have submitted Cal State Apply before. There are four quadrants that applicants will need to complete. We also offer a PDF application guide that's available online. And we encourage applicants to have that open while they're working on the Cal State Apply application. We have screenshots and a tutorial that will guide applicants through the entire application process. Once an applicant has completed the application, they'll pay a $70 application fee. 
Unfortunately, this is non-refundable and it is per CSU. So if you are applying to multiple campuses, let's say here and another CSU, um, and you submit one application to each, then that's gonna be $140. Our, all of our MBA programs follow the same deadlines for applications. That is March 15th for international candidates and June 1st for our domestic candidates. Finally, you'll submit transcripts and test scores to the university as needed. All right, so a little bit about the application components. We are very pleased to announce that our Graduate Programs Council has recently met and voted to waive the GMAT and GRE exam for all of our fall 2024 applicants. This has been a continuation of the pandemic waivers, and so we're very happy with this decision. So you do not need to take or submit GMAT or GRE scores. The application consists of a resume, video statement of purpose, a short answer essay, and two letters of recommendation. I'll get into a little bit more details about each of these application components next. In order to apply, you'll navigate to Cal State Apply and select Fall 2024. You don't already have one and select your program of interest. The application will then load what's referred to as your dashboard. This shows the four different quadrants. And as you complete the information in each of the quadrants, it will turn all green and you'll have a check mark indicating that all of the sections required have been completed. In quadrant one, this is personal information. So this is going to be your contact information, your email address so that we can notify you, you've been admitted to the program and just some other personal details about yourself. Quadrant two is academic history. This is where you'll indicate to university admissions the colleges that you are currently or have previously attended. You will also enter your GPAs. A lot of applicants contact us with questions about their previous or current attended institutions and how to calculate GPA. The GPA that Enrollment Services and University Admissions is looking for is your cumulative undergraduate GPA. It's okay if you're not sure which one is the right GPA, because sometimes transcripts list like a couple different GPAs, like upper division or program level. Um, and so it's okay if you're not sure. Enrollment services and university admissions will confirm this because you will be sending an official transcript later on. Within quadrant three, um, pardon me, within quadrant three, this is where they will ask for your experiences. You're actually going to leave this section blank because you'll be submitting your resume in quadrant four. All right, so talking a little bit more in depth about quadrant four, there's four different tabs at the top. There's questions, documents, and recommenders. So within the questions tab, this is where you'll include your video statement of purpose link. You might have noticed that Dr. Smith didn't mention anything about interviews or next steps as part of the admissions process. We actually don't have that because we do a video statement of purpose from our candidates. And so this serves as kind of an informal way of interviewing. Within the video, you'll record yourself and respond to these four prompts. So we ask you to briefly introduce yourself and explain your educational or career background. You'll also address what are your career goals over the next three to five years. You'll then talk about what is your long-term dream job. And finally, we wanna know what are you doing to prepare yourself for graduate school? The video should be approximately three to five minutes. So we recommend spending approximately one minute per each of those four prompts. And then you can upload the video to any video platform or server that you prefer. YouTube tends to be pretty popular. All we ask is that the video is publicly available and viewable without the admissions committee faculty members having to log in or create an account to view it. The next tab in quadrant four is the documents tab. This is where you will upload your resume, your short answer essay document, and then the test waiver document. The short answer essay is truly short. It is a maximum of one page. We ask that you use 12 point font, double space with one inch margins, and that you address this prompt. 
Describe a time when you experienced a challenge and how you overcame that challenge. What would you do differently if you could experience the challenge over again? So one page on a Word document or PDF, and then you'll upload that into Quadrant 4 under the Documents tab. And then finally, since all applicants are eligible for the test waiver, you'll upload the test waiver document. All right, the last tab in Quadrant 4 is the Recommendations tab. Within this tab, you will enter the names and emails of two recommenders. As soon as you enter their email, your recommenders will automatically receive an email from Cal State Apply with the instructions and the link to upload the letter of recommendation. In case you're worried about a recommender not fulfilling the letter of recommendation on time, you can enter up to three individuals for the letters of recommendation. Only two are required. So the third is just sometimes our applicants are worried or concerned that someone might not get it in on time. And so they wanna have a third as a backup. That's no problem. Only two are required, but you can enter up to three. And then talk to your recommender so that they include these tips in their letter of recommendation. So a letter of recommendation should include their history with you, a detailed statement of the characteristics that they believe will help you excel in graduate school, some specific descriptions of the contributions that you've brought either to the classroom or to the workplace, and then a strong closing statement of endorsement for your candidacy to the program. All right, that is everything related to Cal State Apply. Once you have submitted and paid for the Cal State app, uh, Apply application, you will then send your transcripts. If you attended or are currently attending a domestic institution within the United States, then your institution may already be set up for electronic transcripts. If so, you'll enter the email address listed here. It is es idptrans at csulb.edu. Alternatively, you can enter a mailing address. You can also drop them off in person as long as they are sealed. If you are currently attending or have attended California State University at Long Beach in the past, you do not need to send Cal State Long Beach transcripts to Cal State Long Beach. University Admissions and Enrollment Services has access to your previous records. So save some money and don't send a Cal State Long Beach transcript to the same institution. For those who have international transcripts, you will send those to the International Admissions Office and their address is listed here. If you have any questions about the international admissions process, you can also email them at cie-admission at csulb.edu. All right, finally, we will be opening it up for questions in just a moment, but in case you have a question that comes up after the session ends, you are welcome to contact us. Um, you can stop by our office if you happen to be nearby the campus, or maybe you're a current student there. You can also email us, you can call us, and then also check out our website. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now so that everyone can engage freely in any questions that they may have. And then again, just a friendly reminder that everyone will be receiving a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, as well as a link to this recording just as soon as the session ends tonight.